All right, this is hopefully going to be the release version, so I'm just going to go through some of the things that have changed. So the first thing is under transfers, there's a option now to decode MS or not. By default, if you had uh, MS in the channel layout, you would see a little button down there, and it would allow you to toggle on and off for auditioning purposes. This now allows you to choose whether or not globally, whether you want to transfer it decoded to left, right, or if you want to just leave it uh, transferred as MS. So that's a nice simple one. This one bugged me for a while. Uh, the left and the right panes, when you drag them, they would sort of jump a little bit. So that's all nice and smooth. That's pretty easy. Um, this is a, a fun one too. Let's see what we got. Actually, I'll just, I'll just use this. Um, so you see there's an, another little button here. This will throw everything into edit mode. Now what you can do is go to your preferences, your field order. If there's certain fields that you're always sort of editing, you can like right click and move them to the top. So I'll put this one, this one, that one, rearrange these a little bit just by dragging them. So now when I select a file, those will show up at the top. And if I go into edit mode, I can now click on something. And I can tab to the next item. And you see it's made the changes. If I call up category here, somewhere. Oh, of course, it's already visible. There we are, new category. Um, you can do it from multiple as well. So that's all of them done. And there's undo history as well. So undo, redo. Get that back to normal. Um, the multi meta tags. So multi tag, meta tag window. Down here, there's an option now to use just the built in Lua file, which is the tags.lua file. Um, if you had decided you want to modify this, maybe you want to have one for music and one for sound effects, you could save that. Uh, sound effects one or the music one somewhere else, and then you can load it as an alternate tags.lua file. And then it will update the list. And then below here, it will show you the most recent ones that you've used. So you can quickly toggle between different ones by choosing different tags.lua files. Okay, let's talk about radium for a little bit here. There is now six slots, so it's increased by one. Um, presets. You can now drag to adjust, toggle it on and off, and it will remember the height that you used. So we'll load this one up in, in here. Uh, just close the presets down. When you hit S to solo, it will move focus to that slot as well now. And I'll just clear this. We'll go back to our walls. Let's see if we've got multiple. Okay, so there was obviously Shift R will capture all the regions that are identified down below. And then if I hit load, they would all show up as individual radium regions. I'll just change this to my MIDI controller. There we are. Um, I'll just move off this record. Now what you can do, if you just know you want these three to be identified, you can mark across them, hit Shift R, and it will could go just across those three regions, and then when you load, it'll just be those three. Okay, we'll load this in here for the next little thing. So, the time-specific envelopes. Let's do one on pitch. And we'll make it so that it pitches down over two seconds. Over here, you've got an option now. This is the default on attack. So that means as you hit note on, it starts counting right away. But you can do it so this happens on release. You'd have to adjust this a little bit. Give yourself some time for the release to happen. <clears throat> so when, now when I hit note on, note off. So when I hit, when I release the key, that's when the envelope started to kick in. So 
So, that's a nice fun one. Radium naming. So this has been moved over here. So you can change the recording naming options. So instead of just SM record, you can put in a base name like Wolves. Uh, you can also add some metadata. So we'll add to description, whatever. And now when I hit record, you'll see that the, the file is called Wolves. If I just click on this and reveal it, there it is right there. That's where it got recorded. And if I was to add it to the current database, so I'll swap to the RAM database, and I'll just right click, whoop, do this, go scan selected into current database, there it is. And you can see the description is filled out. Um, random generators. So I'll just take this off. <laughs> So there's now three random generators, and you can route these to all the regular parameters. So we'll do like pitch shift amount, turn it on. So you can hear it's very much like a sample and hold. It will just adjust the the uh, the amount. It's just basically like a square wave that's choosing different amounts. So if I needed to just modulate a little bit of it, you can see. Right now it's set to uh, once every second, it's gonna change. So I'll speed it up a little bit. There we go. So something I still have to add is a little bit of a smoothing control like there is inside the chopper, but depending on what you're, you're throwing it onto, it's usable right now. And you can assign that same random generator to multiple places, but only the topmost one allows control of the frequency of it. Over here now, you've got the ability to clear all the modulation settings, but you can also copy the modulation settings, go to another slot, and paste them. So that's a nice time saver. And then, to really finish off this little update, I'll load this up here. So I've got, you can see ADSS HR is all there. This one has certain tuning settings. It's got some effects on. So if I go to the edit menu now and copy all parameters, I can go to another slot and I can paste the parameters. And you see it pasted the effects, it pasted the envelopes, um, the ADSR stuff. If there was any of these things, they would have been copied and pasted, but the sound remains the same as well as the tuning. So let's just do something here. We'll go on pitch, we'll do this, and we'll go to copy, and then we'll go here and we'll say paste. So now when I go to pitch, it's now done that, as well as all the other things that I mentioned. And you can throw that on a key command by going to key mappings, and there's copy our parameters there. And I think that's probably it. So if there's no bugs, then I'll push this out as a proper release version.